So in this lecture we're going to pick up on something that we touched on in the last one, namely that the condition of a matrix, so the form of the, the matrix, or the sorts of numbers in the matrix, may lead to specific issues. In the previous example we said that if we have any, uh, any equation that can be posed as a linear combination of any other equations, then we haven't supplied the matrix with enough information and this shows up by the matrix not being invertible. So that's what happens when we don't have enough information in the system, but sometimes it's the case that we appear to have enough information, but uh, the, the information is, is not posed in such a form that we can actually extract the solution from it. So to illustrate that, we're going to look here at an example and uh, it's this example in the notes here, matrix conditioning. And there's quite a long, um, long description that's given here. So in this problem, you're a new engineer at, uh, at a petrochemicals company. And you are in charge of a reactor in which you are producing product P from reactants A and B. And uh, this is the reaction rate mechanism that's understood to... Uh, to describe the rate uh, at which P is produced from two reactions involving species A and, uh, sp and B. So there's a debate about whether B actually participates, in other words, whether this reaction actually contributes any of component P. So you try to answer this in the lab by performing two experiments and you attempt to vary uh, the concentrations of A and B such that um, you investigate whether the rate of P has changed and you do this by varying the pressure. Right? So in the first experiment you uh, fix the pressure such that you achieve a concentration of 1 for CA and 2 for CB and uh, from that you measure the reaction rate as being 7. Right? And uh, then you perform the experiment again just by adjusting the pressure and if you increase the pressure by a factor of 4, you find that the concentration of A becomes 4.000 uh, and the concentration of B is 8.002. So for now we'll just assume that we can get uh, concentrations to, to such a high degree of accuracy. Of course that's quite optimistic. But anyway, we've performed those two experiments with those two sets of conditions and uh, we achieved these two reaction rates, right? When we measured the rate in response to those applied concentrations, then we get the values 7 and 28. Right, so according to you, um, this is enough information now to determine whether component B actually does participate in that reaction and uh, indeed on solving the system, right? If you create this as a matrix and you invert and solve for uh, A and B, right? Of course, we can we can write this in the form R equals K times C, where R is the set of uh, of rates and C is the set of concentrations. So, in other words, it would be the vector for R uh, would look like that, and then the matrix for C would be the the uh, concentrations 1.000, uh, 2.000 and uh, underneath that you'll have the uh, the other concentrations 4.000 and 8.002 right so that's your matrix C and uh, you could say, well, my solution K, my uh, values for K would simply be the inverse of C times R. And uh, on doing that, you get that K equals 7.000 and 0 here. In other words, component B does not produce any of uh, product P. So according to you then, component B doesn't play any role. And then in the problem here, I write... Uh, you've rushed off to the boardroom to explain this and uh, all the savings that can be made by omitting component B from the process and uh, in walks an engineer who it is rumored has had numerical analysis training and at once he questions that experiment he, he says the experiment is ill-conditioned so what's he talking about? Right, this example reveals for us one of the issues that might arise and in fact frequently does arise in, um, 
in matrix manipulation uh, that is that the matrix is uh, is ill conditioned which means it can't be inverted properly and if that's the case we can't really trust any solutions that we might have uh, achieved so let's uh, let's look at the reason for that first of all as I say we create the matrix C like this right this is the equation we're trying to solve the matrix C is created like that and so we hope to invert C and get K right and uh, let's look at the physical meaning in the first experiment we have uh, the concentration of A being that and concentration of B being that and the rate is that so if we use those values in our rate expression, right, R equals K1CA plus K2CB, if we use uh, the concentrations and the rate there, then that's what we get. And uh, <coughs> K1 and K2 are our unknown kinetic rate constants. And, um, and so this line gives us a relationship between K1 and K2. In other words, um, the, the values of K1 and K2 which satisfy these experimental conditions will lie along this line. Right, so le let's just plot this line quickly. Uh, so switching over here, let's just write, uh, write this in the form of a script file. So let's say here, close all, clear all CLC. And uh, let's choose K1 in the range, lens space in the range not to 10 and let's just choose a thousand points there so we can say here k well i've done it the other way around i've uh, i've got k2 as the x value so let's just make that k2 and then k1 equals and here we have uh, using this equation uh, well this one it's going to be 2 minus 2 times k2 so that's minus 2.123 divided by 1.123 uh, times k2 plus and uh, that's 7 divided by 1 7.123 divided by 1.123 right so that's k1 and k2 and let's just plot that plot k2 is on the x-axis k1 is on the y-axis and let's just label the axes to remind us of that so x-axis is k sub 2, y-axis is k sub 1, and let's just save this as ex01, exercise 1, I suppose, and running that ex01 gives us this result. Right, so this is the, you, you could say that this is the plane of possibilities for k1 and k2. Right, that any point, if we pick any point on this plane, that's uh, effectively a choice for K1 and K2, which might or might not be the solution we require. We want to know what K1 and K2 is for that reaction. If we pick a point that's specifying such a solution, then applying that first experimental data point in the uh, th that we measured, we get this relationship between K1 and K2. So we've reduced out of this plane of possibilities this line of uh, um, yeah this line of possibilities for a combination of k1 and k2 which uh, and uh, which which will satisfy those experimental conditions so any point on this line satisfies that experiment we can also apply some physical reasoning here you can see for any points in this part here right if we imagine a line here uh, going through zero any points down here will require that k1 be negative which of course is uh, physically meaningless to us so um, so we we really regard this part of the line as as being our solution as being the the, the possible solutions that we might get so that's what uh, that's what we have from the first experiment now let's use the second experiment so going back to the problem here um, we've got that the uh, the second set of conditions is 4 and 8, right? We just changed the pressure, so the concentration of A is 4 and the concentration of B is 8.001 and uh, the rate is 28.003. So uh, if we apply the same approach there, right? If we use the reaction rate expression and substitute all the values for the rate and the concentration and then rewrite it in terms of K1, 